Hello, 3D printer peeps. Hello, Bamboo Lab users. I'm here with the Bamboo Lab P1S, and we are going to install the BQ Panda Revo. This is a toolless quick change nozzle that you can change with your bare hands. Let me read a few of BQ's official notes, and then we are going to install this in this P1S. The Panda Revo was co-developed with E3D, meaning this hot end is compatible with the entire line of E3D rapid change nozzles. It has a 60 watt heater core and an NTC 100K thermistor custom made by E3D to satisfy the power requirements for high speed, high flow printing. Whatever that means. It comes with the ultra high flow Revo 0.4 nozzle installed, which of course is a 30 second bare hand change. You can remove and replace that nozzle with any Revo rapid change nozzle by simply unscrewing the nozzle with your bare hands and screwing in the new one. This particular version is compatible with all P1 printers. There is also an X1C version. With the hot end in this box, BQ is claiming volumetric speeds up to 35 and 40. We'll find out how it works. So if you are looking for faster printing and easier, faster nozzle changes, the little toy in this box might be for you. Let's go over the installation process in the P1S. Once you remove the original P1S hot end and replace it with the BQ Revo hot end, the only thing you'll be changing in the future is the actual screw in nozzle. As usual, I've been paid $0 for this video and BQ doesn't even know I'm making it. Let's take a minute and have a look at today's sponsor. PCBWay is an advanced manufacturing company that can create everything from PCBs to SLA, FDM, and even CNC milling to bring your commercial projects to life in a more advanced and professional manner than you might be able to do at home. They also offer a lineup of electronical components that you can order in order to marry your 3D printed and electronic projects together. PCBWay offers competitive pricing, fast turnaround, and a complete line of manufacturing services. Whatever your project calls for, it's likely PCBWay can handle it. Pop into their site, see what they offer, and tell them 3D Rundown sent you. Now, let's get back to work. The first order of business is to bring the hot end up front so you have easier access to it. You may grab the hot end, slide it over, put your hand behind it, and push it forward. Did you see that? No? Good. Neither did I. No worries. My beloved flexi spot desk will make this easier. All I did was reach behind here and gently slide it forward. The first thing we need to do is remove this tool head cover. Be very careful. There is an attached fan cable underneath. Pinch the sides of the tool head cover and simply pop it off. It's connected by a magnet. Right here is the connector for the tool head. Pop that off. This will expose your hot end. We will be removing these two screws right here and unplugging both connections here on the board. Let's remove those connections first. Pop off one, pop off two. Route those wires off their clip and leave them aside. Find yourself an Allen key that fits and remove these two screws. Number one and number two. With both screws out, all you need to do is grab the nozzle right here and wiggle and pull down. The whole hot end will pop off. With the hot end removed, we are going to salvage the fan and relocate it to the Revo. There are two screws securing the fan to the hot end. Go ahead and carefully remove the fan, keeping both screws, and you may do as you wish with this hot end. Here is the Revo hot end we will need to attach the fan. We will relocate the fan to the Revo hot end using the same screws. But first, we'll route this wire. Gently turn it to the side 
and place it into this channel. Place the fan over the wire. You will then install this fan using the same screws that came off your bamboo. One very important detail about the Revo hot end is the direction this wire faces. When looking at the fan head on, this wire needs to face the right. If this wire faces the left, you will not be able to install it. My Revo came with this wire facing the right. If yours came with this wire facing the right, you can easily fix it. Simply remove the nozzle, and look right here for a spring. Take that spring and pop it off. Take the wire, bend it over to the correct side, and snap the spring back into place. Go ahead, reinstall the nozzle, and screw it in. When it's firm and there's no wiggle, you're all done. Your Revo should look like this. This wire should be to the left of the Revo. It's now time to install your fancy Revo. With the fan facing the left side of the printer, take both wires and pull them off to the side. With both wires off to the side, slide your Revo into place. Support the tool head and install the two original screws. Pinch the hot end and make sure it's stable. With the hot end installed, go ahead and reinstall these two wires. Technically, they belong behind this little clip right here. However, you may find this wire a little too stiff for that, so you might want to go ahead and skip it. In order to not destroy my hot end, I did this off camera. The fat one goes here, the next one goes here, and the tool head fan goes here. You will see this Revo connector it does not snap into place as aggressively as the bamboo, so you may not feel the click. It may feel softer, but it should be firmly in place anyway. With the Revo screwed in and the two wires attached, you are done and ready to replace your cover. But, Mr. Rundown, what about the star of the show? The 30 second cold swap bare hand screw in place nozzle. When you are ready to replace or change the nozzle, simply pinch it right here. and Lefty Lucy. There it is. Take the replacement, slide it up into the Revo, and righty tighty. you will see the spring compress and the nozzle is firm. You are done. That's all it takes to change the nozzle in the Panda Revo with an E3D Rapid Change Revo nozzle. Finally, you'll want to connect the last connection, which is the fan on your tool head cover and snap it back into place using the magnets. And there it is, the Revo nozzle still in reach so that you may unscrew it and rescrew it. Before testing your Revo, you will need to run a full calibration to be sure it's functioning properly. Navigate your menu to the donut, press OK, scroll down to calibration, press OK, go ahead and press yes. If this process completes successfully, your Revo hot end installation 
was a success. All right, calibration complete. Go ahead and press OK. And now it's time to go to Bamboo Studio to adjust our filament profile for our fancy new hot end. With the Revo installed, it's time to change your filament profile to take advantage of the high flow nozzle. BQ is suggesting changing it to a whopping 35 to 40. To do this, we will enter a filament profile. First, let's have a look at what it's set at now and what our print times look like. To enter a profile, click right here. I'm going to look at my Creality Ender Brown Filament. Click this pencil and paper right here and scroll all the way down to max volumetric speed. 21 is already on the high side. I am also going to change the speed to more reasonable 200 MMS across the board. and we'll slice the plate. You will see our print time is one hour, nine minutes. Don't worry, changing these speeds will not affect your print time all that much. As you can see, it's still showing one hour, nine minutes with the original speeds. Let's go ahead and slice it at 21. You will see a doggo print time of one hour, nine minutes. I also don't like this Z seam. We will change it to back. That's better. One hour, nine minutes. Let's click into here and I will change this to 35. Press save. I'm going to rename it Revo so that I can use this profile with other printers that don't have the Revo high flow nozzle. Press OK, X out. And you will now see I have Creality Ender Brown Revo, as well as my original Creality Ender Brown. Switching to Revo, let's go ahead and slice the plate. You will see it's showing the same amount of time. However, this is a high flow nozzle, so I feel better bumping the speeds up. I'm not going to go crazy just yet. profile and looking at cooling. I'm going to reduce the minimum layer time from 10 seconds to 6 seconds and the minimum print speed from 20 to 30. Unless you have very small features that need to be printed, I would recommend keeping this number very low. I'm going to press save and OK. I'm then going to go ahead and slice the model. Would you look at that? We're down to 52 minutes. We can go even crazier and reduce this number even more. If you want to really go crazy, tell the machine not to slow printing down for better cooling at all. Save that, slice the model, and holy cow, 44 minutes and 34 seconds. This is just to demonstrate that just because the nozzle is capable of higher flow, doesn't mean the software knows how to use it. You will need to work with your slicer, run some tests, try different filaments, and see what your results are. Different filaments may perform better or worse with different flow speeds and cooling. Also, different mods may affect this as well. It's not a black and white topic. Let's go back into our filament drop our minimum layer time to five seconds, recheck slow down printing, but I'll reduce the minimum speed to 40 seconds, a little more conservative, press OK. I will bump this up a touch more. And slice that plate. We are looking at 48 minutes total time. Let's have a peek at layer time. Here you can see a very stable layer time of roughly five seconds throughout the entire print with some of these top layers here on the feet and here on the head being a little bit slower. 
down at the very top of the print being even slower than that. Reducing the printer's ability to slow the print too much can cause you trouble with print quality. As you can see, these are very small layers, so each layer is printed very quickly. The layer time is very small, especially for small details like this. If the layer doesn't have enough time to cool, the next layer will just twist and deform that layer and you'll have a trash print. So go ahead and learn to work on a balance between pushing your speeds and maintaining proper quality. Moving up here to speed, you can see how the printer slows things down in order to be sure it can print overhangs properly and top surfaces and small surfaces properly. Let's go ahead and print a 48 minute 105% doggo. My P1S name is Angel and I'm using an external spool. We already ran a full calibration, so I won't do the bed level, but I will of course do the time lapse. Here in our preview window, I can see the red rubber ring for the first time and we'll be back in 48 minutes. Holy cow, this thing is flying and it looks good. And there we are, my very first test dog on the Panda Revo. It printed quickly and most important, it printed absolutely perfect. I'm not here to give you my opinion. I'm simply here to give you instruction to help you get the most out of any particular item that you may choose to use. However, I'm pleased to say the BQ Revo appears to work very well. I am happy enough with it that I'm going to go ahead and keep mine installed while bestowing my machine with the BQ XE3D label. I'm Greg Adventure and you're on 3D Rundown.